Hey, we can work for a better life and a better future. One people, one nation, one destiny. 1975, and we're at the start of our journey, full of youthful ambition and eager to uproot the prejudices of Babylon. Still, we had everything to prove at the top level of the game. Test cricket, a five-day contest battling against an opponent. Very soon, we'll be facing the toughest test of all, traveling to Australia to face the champions on their home soil. Shot one, take four. Already there's an air of expectancy. Their dashing captain, Clive Lloyd, is quietly spoken but determined. And are you very confident of winning? We want to win, it's no doubt about that. Um, it has been built as a sort of world championship. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can give her our best. At the moment, the Australian side, to my mind, is the best in the, in the world. And I think fast bowlers all through test history have been the difference between a, a good side and a great side. You know, Thompson and Lily are great bowlers. Jeff Thompson and Dennis Lilly are the most talked about cricketers in the world. The underlying point is controversy. Controversy about bounces or bumpers, deliberate intimidation, aiming to hit the batsman, and bowling bounces at tail enders. Splendid bowling performance then from Jeff Thompson. He bowled really fast today, as indeed he has done throughout this match, and a great psychological boost for him and for the whole of the Australian side. Lily has struck again, another great performance there by Lily. That cricket team decimated every other cricket team around the world. They beat everybody at home and abroad. They nearly killed England. Thompson to Lloyd. And hit badly there that time. I remember the English literally running for cover and begging for mercy. Australia had outstanding fast bowlers. Fast bowlers, and when I say fast bowlers, I'm talking about people who really bowl fast. Not talking about people who just bowl 80, 81 miles an hour. Talking about people who bowl 90, 90 odd miles an hour. Because that extra dimension is whether you can get hurt or not. And that's oh, him on the head, a bad one. The batsman is one. People get killed. It has happened. It's like a bullet. If there's something in front of it, you could be dead. <laughs> Now, once you have the capability of hurting someone with that ball, that person is not thinking about how to play the ball. He's thinking about self-preservation. I'm trying to scare him, trying to hurt him, perhaps in the ribs or the leg or something like that, so that he at least knows you're around. Dennis Lilly will stand in front of you, and he stands up this enormous figure, look you in the eye. He wants that ball to cause me a great deal of harm. He want to inflict pain. He want to injure me. The one individual that you found just very difficult to play would be Jeff Thompson. He was ruthless in my opinion. Tomo was a danger. He was a danger man. Thompson's sport away from the test match arena helps keep him fit for hurling down his thunderbolts. It takes a lot of running with a zest akin to collecting test scalps. How do you about that call? He was a mean man. My word, it does look a picture today. It's always a great moment. A nerve-wracking one for some players, an exciting one for others. It is the test of all tests. That's why they call it the test. Test matches. To be out in the field for five days, you have to have the endurance. The race is not for the swift, but who can endure to the end. That's a test. That's a test of every player. A lot of young people were in that West Indies team. That was either their first tour or their second tour. We were green, we were young, we were inexperienced. Thrust into international cricket, thrown in at the deep end. You went out and all you could hear screaming in your ears was Lily, Lily, kill, kill, kill. Lily, Lily, kill, kill, kill. You felt that 
They kept me a lot of love going on here. It is in your face. It wasn't easy walking out to face those guys with the crowd almost on top of you. Out there, it was a war. Believe me, it was a war. And they didn't let up. They threw the kitchen sink, they threw everything at you. They let you know, well, we're in charge and you're not coming on our patch to do well. It was as if fired out of a rifle. Lillian and Thompson, they bounced any and everyone. People were bobbing and weaving and ducking and falling on their backsides, trying to get away. A serious induction into fast bowling, that was terrifying. A absolutely terrifying. I remember Lily bowling a bouncer to Lance Gibbs, and Lance, at the end of the day, went up to him and said, listen, I've got a wife and kids, be careful what you're doing. Start with fire and direction. That was hit him in the face, I think. Serious ball, Richie. I think it got him on the jaw. That climbed straight up. Injuries, broken fingers, broken shoulders, cracks on the head, and it was humiliating. It was like a military assault on West Indies cricket. Bowled him. The Austin cartwheeling back almost to March. Oh, well, oh, well, well, well. Sport. That was a lovely piece of cricket by the Australians. Luther Richards. Is it here? He's out. Steph Thompson at his best. That's out. Green bowled. Roberts is out. That was a nasty series and lots of confrontations on and off the field. They knew. They knew. They were seasoned campaigners. And they knew when to turn the screws. Some of the Aussies has this way that if they could not get you out, they would rather abuse you out. Things were said and the color of your skin came into it. When you're constantly being bombarded with comments and behavior, well, I encountered some ignorance before. But this, this was very different, very, very different. The crowd, people in the crowd did say things, things that shouldn't have been said, things that weren't politically correct, where people would tell you about your heritage or your background or go back to the trees that you came from. You black bastard, and I get rather annoyed anyone's gonna call me a black bastard because I'm not. You stop and look and see where the comment came from, then they would laugh and so on because to them it's a big joke. It, it degraded me and downgraded me a great deal. I was naive going to Australia and I thought test cricket was a gentleman's game. I lost it. I just could not believe that this was taking place. Michael just went and sat down and could not believe and tears was coming out of his eyes saying he don't know how guys could play cricket like this so hard. And yes, there was a lot of bickering. People started to blame each other. Batsmen blaming bowlers. The bowlers blaming batsmen. It was not a very happy dressing room, and it was not a happy time. So there it is, Australia winning by seven wickets. We got a job in. They beat us 5-1. When the West Indies were annihilated, that burned everybody in the West Indies really badly. We feel it with tears come. I see people cry when West is loose. When West is gone, you know, people tears come down. Very disappointed, man. Very, very disappointed. We're wondering now if we can come back up. When? People didn't feel the West Indies players had the fight in them. This Calypso cricket stigma stuck with us. We weren't willing to go there and fight to the end. And we just give up. When that team returned to the Caribbean, it was like soldiers coming home from a war. They realized that everything was at stake. And Clive Lloyd knew that West Indian cricket was at the crossroads. A lot of soul searching went on during that time. Clive, as a young captain, was under pressure. He became very depressed, even questioned his own right to be the captain. They say, after humiliation, is riches, power, might, and blessing eternally, forever. Go run fight, run fight. Fight, fight is a, is a game. You have to put your heart in to play and keep it up. Don't go down. Fight. Yes. Launch an attack, come with me, launch an attack, no. Launch an attack, come with me, launch an attack, could you hear me? I can remember Clive said, never again. If we can find some fast bowlers who are just as quick as they are, or even quicker, 
Let us see how well they handle it. Clive Lloyd took a very blunt decision. We can also play your game. We can generate a bowling machinery that will obliterate, that can rub you into the ground and decimate. So he needed very fast bowlers. And he went through the Caribbean looking for players to fit into his machine. He had already picked Michael Holden and saw the talent and the brilliance of this young man. And people questioned Clive Lloyd's knowledge. Say so Clive Lloyd, oh, you're bringing Michael Holden. I'm going to have 17. But Clive said, don't watch that. This little youth, I like him potential. The captains were so astute. Such cricket brain come once in a lifetime. Oh, Lord. Yes. First, you had three. Wayne Daniel, Holding, and Roberts. Fast, furious, aggressive, and really could dismiss you. It was very skillfully done. It was a superb construction. This is cricket, lovely cricket. Yes, cricket, lovely cricket. Man, I mean, say, people, are you ready? No, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I want a solid. <laughs> 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 <laughs>